Financial planning, financial targets in your cake business. This is a re-recording because I've re-watched the original and I felt I waffled a little bit too much and I didn't quite make things clear. So watch this one and it'll hopefully make a bit more sense this time. So I've got my notes. <laughs> right, how do we set ourselves a financial target in our cake business? Because it, it's so natural in the beginning to just wing it and think I just want to make as much money as possible. But then you might get six months down the line and realise that your business has actually cost you more than what you've you've taken. Um, so we need to set a target income amount amount for each month. Um, there's four things you need to consider, four numbers you need to come up with in the beginning. One, your overheads and fixed costs. Number two, your desired earnings. Number three, um, your profit for future investment in the business. And number four, your product costs. I'm going to break those down into further details now. So number one, your overheads. What is your business costing you to run? Um, you'll notice a difference in your utility bills um, as you get busier. Um, your gas and electric are going to go up. If you're on a water meter, that'll increase. You've got insurance costs and um, anything like website hosting or if you have a regular market stall, all those costs. Um, also, a portion of your phone and internet is claimable as an, allow an allowable expense with HMRC. So adding something like that. These costs are not your materials cost. These are your overheads, what we call your fixed costs. Um, they're not directly into relation, in relation to producing your cake orders. These ve may very well be roughly the same amount each month. Um, Certainly once you've been trading a year, you can work out what it's cost you and you can come up with, with quite a decent figure because you probably need to estimate it in the beginning. But make sure that you do come back once you're established, once you've got into your routines and you're, you're as busy, you know, you got busier. Um, come back and review as your bills come in. Um, so add all these costs together and this is your monthly overhead figures. So you've got your number one that you need. Right, number two, what do you need to earn? What do you want to earn? Right, work out for the entire year what you what you like your survival budget is, what you need to pay your bills and to keep your life ticking over, and then add in um, what you want for uh, holidays, for Christmas, for savings, and add in like your disposable income. You know, do you want 50 quid a week to spend on treats? Um, as you see fit so come up with that figure um don't forget to include like your tax and national insurance please don't forget that because you don't want to be hit with a bill come january and, and you can't pay it because you've not budgeted for it so allow for that money as well once you've worked out what you need for the year divide this by 12 and that's your monthly earnings target if you've got a day job or you've got another source of income of any kind, how much have you already got coming in towards that total? You might be part way there. So use that target. That'll It'll come in handy to help you to decide whether you want to give up the day job, whether you're ready to do that. Um, if you're on any kind of benefits, please have a chat with your work coach. Work out what they will expect of you. Uh, don't take any jumps before you, know, you, you go to Universal Credit with it. Make sure you know what they want from you. If you need a bit more help with this, I've got an entire lesson about budgeting later in the money stage. So, right, so that's your figure number two, your earnings target. Your number three figure is what money do you need to grow the business? Um, do you need a bigger oven? Do you need a bigger fridge, an airbrush, an edible printer? Um, budget for things like dummy cakes and, you know, what it's going to cost you to cover them, to build up your portfolio with the... The style of cake that you want to do um if you know that you get shiny object syndrome if you know that you're going to be spending money each month on new cake tools and whatever new comes out and building your, your supplies budget for it here um it's all right you know i'm i really do like to tell people don't spend on what you don't need yet but some of us do it we're excited so you can budget you can set yourself a monthly budget to keep yourself in check with that um, so calculate what you want to buy in the first year to carry your business forward, to grow it. Divide that by 12 and that will give you your monthly target figure for your growth, your profit. 
Right, this one's a difficult one. Number four, what are you spending on stock? It's absolutely impossible to work this out. Um, this is like ingredients and packaging, your materials cost, right? Because this changes so much depending on what orders you've got coming in, especially as you're getting busier. So how we do this in the beginning, give yourself a, a budget for your stock each month and include that in your target. Right, maths time, the easiest way of doing this, take those three figures that you've just got, um, your... I've lost it and I've lost my concentration because my son just bang. Add up your monthly figures you've just calculated in steps one to three, right? So it's your overheads plus your earnings target plus your growth target. You've got that number, call that Y, right? Multiply Y by 1.5. This will give you a good budget to cover your materials cost. So each month, if you make sure that you're putting a third of your income back into stock, you're on the right track. It should more than it should comfortably cover you for paying for all your stock. Okay, so this total figure you've just come to steps one, two, and three, and then multiplied by one point five. That is your takings target, your turnover target, right? So what do we need to do with this target? Keep it written down. Keep it somewhere visible so that it stays in your head. Um. So. Each week, you need to consistently sell enough to cover or even exceed this figure. Um, so each week, you'll have this number in your head. And if you feel like you're a bit behind on your orders, it'll just give you that push to just give one last, one more sales post. Um, make the best of your busy times, such as Mother's Day and Christmas, to get ahead. Um, but don't, don't think, don't rest on your laurels at that point. Make the best of your quiet times to get ahead on production. You can fill your freezer. You can get ahead with your fondant toppers. If you know that Valentine's Day is coming, you can produce your fondant toppers a month in advance if you, you know, while it's quiet. Um, if you've always got that bit of freezer stock, you know, some six inch and eight inch vanilla cakes, chocolate cakes in your freezer, trays of plain brownies. If you've always got that stock and you've got the packaging as well, you can take on last minute orders. For those quieter weeks you know um you can sell impulse buys every weekend you can just offer cupcakes you know cheap cupcakes just basic you pull them out of the freezer and you ice them and an hour later when they're picking them up they're defrosted you can do things like that so in the next chapter i'm going to cover how to deal with like the financial and workload roller coaster of the natural seasonality of our business